let's now have a conversation about affirmative action. Because on February 22, 2017, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Dankwe Kufuado, in delivering his State of the Nation address, identified a promulgation of that affirmative action law as one of his key priorities. The Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable uh, Michael Quay, would later come and lend support to that uh, confirmation given by the President. We've had a lot of civil society organizations as well and women rights uh, based groups who have you know, spoken about it. But for the past seven to eight years, the bill has been hanging. What's keeping it in the air and why are we not able to pass it? This morning I've been joined by Gloria Kankam who is with Abantu for Development and uh, Mr. Frank Boja from Wildlife. This, uh, Will Duff, I beg your pardon, this conversation is made possible by Star Ghana with thanks to Danida, the UK aid, and the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank I you. I start with you. What is affirmative action? Uh, somebody would ask. Affirmative action, like in maybe two words, is right. positive discrimination. Mm. When we talk about positive discrimination, it's looking at um, disadvantaged groups in the past okay. and correcting it right. with a policy. And if we, t we are talking about um, an affirmative action as, then mm. it has to be institutionalized okay. so that it's not just by mouth or hearsay, but mm. it's, we have a document supporting an affirmative action and talking about positive discrimination okay. where everybody in society is valued mm. in terms of complementing each other's contribution to social, economic and political, cultural development. Right. Frank, the, the conversation when it started focused more on women. Is that the same case as we have now? Are we being are we positively discriminative in favor of women? Is that the case? Uh, uh, the bill itself uh, that is available now um, uh, does not uh, actually look at only women. Okay. Uh, it focuses on uh, both uh, sexes, mm -hmm. uh, male, female. So uh, though we know that uh, the discrimination in the past had been against women, but the bill is trying to ensure that we don't have to perpetuate any negative thing that we have done against our women in the past. Okay. So it's just looking at broadly uh, bringing on board both men and women, mm -hmm. persons with disabilities, and any disadvantaged group. Okay. And so uh, we should not look at it as if it's a women's bill. Okay. Never. Right. Uh, it is for all but of that's us. That's the perception out there. Yes, really. that's the perception out there. But I think that we should take it from today mm -hmm. that the bill is talking about men and women, mm -hmm. or let's say male and female. Okay. So whether a boy or a girl, as far as uh, you have the uh, qualification and you are due mm -hmm. uh, for something, mm -hmm. uh, the bill is ready to, if it is passed, okay. that is how it's going to be implemented so that nobody is disadvantaged right. in any way. Mm -hmm. So men should feel relaxed, okay. women should feel relaxed, mm -hmm. and rather all of us as uh, 33 million or 30 million Ghanaians, okay. we should all throw our support to this bill. Okay. Uh, when it passes, it's going to favor all of I us. See. We'll come back and talk about how this will help, for example, in policy formulation for these groups that you mentioned. Right. But uh, Gloria, I'm, I'm aware that Abantu has a project for affirmative action. Can you show us some light on that? It is a project to add our voice, advocacy, mm -hmm. to the passage of the bill okay. into an act. Mm -hmm. And so it started last year. In actual fact, Abantu has been doing a lot of work over the years, over okay. 10 years or so. Mm. But then last year, we launched a project okay. to strengthen advocacy mm. for the passage of the bill because the, it's long overdue. We need it. Okay. And that in that document, if you look at it, many, some years ago, let's say, I think in two, 1960, mm -hmm. there was an affirmative action bill like act like that okay. that allowed ten women from mm -hmm. the ten region the mm -hmm. ten regions then no, there to come into there were seven uh, that uh, they were able to get women to parliament. Ten right. women. Right. Uh, depending on the size of the region and all that. At that time the region yeah, were, were seven. seven. Were seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh, but then the act allowed women to go into the parliament on a phone. Okay. So we, if we have an act like this and like France said, it's not a women's bill. Mm. It is for all of us. And in that case, we are even going to get persons with disability mm. 
into the various institutions of decision making and leadership. Okay. And that will also help us build confidence mm. in ourselves. What, what do you say to those who uh, suggest that, look, let's have a fair playing ground, but let's not carve a certain portion or percentage for women or persons with disability. If they are qualified, let them get in there. If they are not qualified, let them wait for their time until they are qualified. No, we are, we are talking about women who are qualified. Okay. But then you see that politics in this country, the political landscape is masculine. Okay. So we need the institutionalized policy that will allow these things. Like do, do women, women shy away from it, from getting into the governor's structure? It's their game. The way the game the is played. Game, eh? Exactly. It's the game that do not allow, does not allow women to get in there so easily. Mm. So we have qualified women. And not really, Ghana is implementing a lot of um, affirmative action. Okay. When you go into an university, there is a cutoff for men right. or <clears throat> male and mm. cutoff for female. Okay. Even into the medical school and mm. the rest of them. So we already have an affirmative action. So we just need to field. formalize it. That's what you're Exactly. To I have see. a document mm. that we can put our hands on and say, this is what it is. And then in that way, we can take a government to call for reason. If you put in 16 um, ministers from mm. the regions and then we have only one female. Then we can talk that, about that's it. That's problematic. Exactly. Frank, let's look at Africa, a broader perspective. What examples can we point, point at? There are um, a lot of countries that have uh, affirmative fashion uh, laws. Mm. Uh, South Africa has one, uh, Zimbabwe has one, Kenya has one, uh, I think Malawi, Zimbabwe mm. and the rest. Mm. Um, but some, those who may not even have, practically they are getting this affirmative action mm. implemented in their programs and their laws, uh, 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 policies, okay. and, and even their actions. Uh, for instance, the, the, the two parties, two strong parties in Nigeria, mm. they have uh, clauses in their um, constitution that if we are pointing uh, from the walls, mm. they have two, uh, like the walls and the branches that right. we have in Ghana, right. they have some of the walls. So you have, if you are pointing from each of the walls, bring them, but when we are bringing the two people, one must be a woman. Okay. So in their it's mandatory, it's mandatory okay. in their manifest. Uh, sorry, in their constitution, the parties' okay. constitution. Mm. So they have practicalized things. In uh, uh, Senegal, it is the same thing. Okay. And in Zimbabwe, they even have like what we have here in Ghana: the appointment of uh, people to the assemblies. Okay. In the in Parliament of Zimbabwe, they appoint people to Parliament okay. apart, apart apart from the elections, mm. depending on your uh, percentage of food. Right. So what they do is that, that one also, they apply 50-50 principle okay. that if you are bringing two, one must be a, a woman. woman. If you are bringing 10, okay. five of them must be women, five of them must be uh, men. Mm. So countries are practicalizing it. Okay. Uh, I think we have not done that. Over the past years, NEC will come, we want 40%, we we'll give them 40%, okay. and they don't fulfill, mm -hmm. or they don't meet it. Uh, NEC will come, MPP will come, will, at a point in time, 50%, at a point in time, In 50 fact, the president, the president yeah. has said that 30% of his government is yes, going yes, to be for yes. women. And Do you and see that? No, 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 it's not, it's not happening at all. At all. Mm -hmm. uh, if Absolutely. you look at the, in terms of the uh, ministers, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, as low as 19.8%. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the district assembly, uh, the DCEs and the MCC, MCEs, very small. Uh, it may not even add up to 15%. Okay. Uh, if you take uh, our parliament is in terms of the number, that one is elected, mm. only 13.8%. Uh, uh, with the Council of State, we have about mm. 20%. Mm. Uh, so we have not even reached there okay. at all. Mm. Uh, all the statistics point to the fact that we've been failing ourselves. And uh, uh, the unfortunate thing is that the constitution stipulates mm. clearly mm. that in the appointment to public uh, uh, offices, mm -hmm. there must be regional and gender balance. Mm. But they always look at the regional balance and then they leave the, they gender, leave the gender, balance. gender balance. So we are not making the progress mm. as it is. And I think that uh, when NEC was in power and they were talking about 40%, mm -hmm. And then this MPP put it in their manifesto that they were going to have 30%. 30%. Yeah. I thought that the 
thirty percent will work, mm -hmm. but it is not working. It is not working. Yes, it is not working. <laughs> look, Gloria, let, let's. So they, then another person will make the argument that look, there's the argument that says women are less corrupt, and that if they are better managers, and that if they get into governance and business, they do better than men have done. That argument is there. But then somebody also raises the concern that, look, we have had uh, a chief justice who's female, we've had another who's a female, we've had uh, Supreme Court judges. So women are getting in there. We've got a first speaker of parliament who's female. So it will take time for us to get there. Do we have the patience? We don't have. We don't have because Ghana ratifies CEDAW. CEDAW is the convention on the UN Convention on, Discri on All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Mm. And that was Ghana ratified in 1986. Wow. And mm -hmm. Article 4 and Article 7 talks about affirmative action. Mm. So we cannot wait because if our current president says, or the NPP government in power now says 30%, that's the UN threshold. Right. And if we are not even halfway through, then we, we cannot wait any longer. We, mm. have, we have come a long well, way. What is holding the law from being passed? Because in Parliament, we have strong voices who say they are advocates of this bill. And yet, for seven, eight years, it's not been passed. Why? What's holding I, it? I think it's a political will. Uh, political will in the sense that a tax law can be introduced today uh, in the morning by 10 o'clock, by 11 o'clock, it's passed. That one is That is a, a political will. So if we have the political will, and then I remember the Rupa. Mm. Uh, the first time we heard the word Rupa, okay. within three months, Rupa was passed. Right. So, it's a political will. Mm. Um, we, we know that uh, certain laws have been passed, the special prosecution. Exactly. Uh, and what are mm. Within a short period, mm. it was passed. So, look at the. the right to information. Uh, no, that was it taking. Uh, in okay. fact, it started from 1990. Exactly. And, and the so same thing that our affirmative action process started around that time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the um, vigilante bill, uh, you can see, it's drafted within a short period. Uh, uh, and uh, but we have been talking about this for 20 years, mm. so you could see that. Where are we now? The, is, uh, I'm coming. The social interest law takes a long time okay. to be passed, or, or the bill right. takes a long time mm. to be passed. But that is what the people need. Is the people who are calling for it? Okay. Why is it that any time people call for something to be done for them, okay. we don't get it? But when the politician call for something and quickly it. it is done. Where, where are we now in, <laughs> where are in we the passage now of this is law? That, um, uh, it went to Parliament in 2016, October, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they could not pass it. So okay. uh, the moment a new government comes in, mm. uh, they have to do review and all that. They have done a good review of it. Okay. Uh, Parliament have gone through, I believe the Cabinet itself had gone through yeah. a lot of them. So the stage that we are is just fine tune it uh, for submission to okay. uh, back to cabinet, and then if it is approved, uh, then it, it goes to uh, parliament, and that is the stage. Do, I think. do we have timelines for this? Have we given them a timetable within which we want this done? Uh, we wish that it could be done even yesterday, uh, <laughs> but uh, the the truth is that uh, if, for instance, cabinet. Uh, needs this bill today, today, today. Mm. They can call for it. Mm. So yeah. it is up to the leadership to take that bold initiative right. and then put some agency on it and then get it uh, done. And okay. I, I believe that if they call the shot mm. within, uh, if they want to pass it tomorrow, Maybe tomorrow, mm. it could be passed. Could be passed. Leadership, is, what leadership is cost, leadership. everything else is effect. <laughs> uh, Gloria, what will be your closing thoughts? Um, advice to duty bearers. You have both said that it's a political will, but yes, the president yes. watches you at this point. What would you say to him? I think I would tell Nana Kufu do that, and the government of Ghana now, and parliament, that um, sustainable development goal, goal 10, goal 5, all is talking about inclusion. Mm -hmm. So we need this affirmative action bill passed into law as soon as possible. I wish it could even be done like France said tomorrow morning right. when Parliament sits. They can sit and get it passed. And then everybody will be included. Otherwise, then we are fighting a, a lose battle because mm. all the um, global frameworks for development are talking about social inclusion. Right. And women contribute a lot. And we need that bill. And also not only women, but persons with disability and the rest of them all.
Right. Thank you very much. Frank, you want to add 30 seconds and quickly? So um, I want to call on every Ghanaian to support this bill. That is not going to discriminate against anyone. It is to promote the interests of everybody. All it, right. it calls for equity, justice, mm -hmm. and fairness. Most grateful. Thank you very much. Indeed. Gloria, I thought you said you were finished. <laughs> yes, I just want to say that um, the Beijing platform for action is 25 next year. Okay. So, so we need to pass this bill before March 8, 2020. Okay. There you have it. Uh, <laughs> call for affirmative action law. Uh, what's holding it? We don't know. A lack of political will and uh, the decision to get it done. Mr. President, good morning to you. As co-chair of the UN uh, board for the uh, SDGs, they are, they are quoting your law for you now, Mr. President. Good morning. But let's say uh, thank you to Star Ghana Foundation for making this conversation possible. And also a uh, big thanks to Danida, UK Aid, and the European Union. Happy birthday to DJ JD. If it's yours as well, happy birthday to you. And a special good morning to lawyer Niai Bonte, Lord Bonte. We'll take a musical break. When we return, Tilapia will be on your screens. What's he talking about this morning? Find out. <laughs> anyway, let's check out Tilapia. He's got something nice for us this morning. He talks about the law of the airwaves. And here you have it. It says Radio uh, X Gold. And your name suggests uh, you do on air, Galamse. So that's uh, the NC on one side with a, a golden key. I think it's locked up the microphone and uh, it's chained up as well. You can find the lady and gentleman, he has a bushy beard and the lady is looking on. They are surprised, perhaps disappointed. And um, well, tilapia is a very bad boy, easy or not. Well, that's what he's sharing with us this morning as we wrap up the entire show. Thank you very much for watching and thank you for staying with us. The weather is cold out there. Go out there and win. And tomorrow we'll bring you a very special uh, conversation started by Zubeda Ismail, a Northern Regional Correspondent. She has a special story on the witch's camp, a follow-up to that earlier story she did. You can't miss it on TV3 New Day. But as always, as I say, if you can think it and your heart can believe it, you can achieve it. Go out there and win. Shine. <laughs>